evening, and how about we start with the song? song for the rainy days that might come in your life and when they come you just have to do a little fairy chant and go down to the river like the Potomac and sing da 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 dee dee I said, now, baby, when I think about you, well, I think of love, love, la, 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 love, 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 la, 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 love, 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 yeah, now, now, in mornings, bright and early mornings, waking up alone, waiting by the falling, and well, it's all over now. Said baby blue, well it's all over because I've got you. Well, I'm gonna do my rain dance, gonna wash it dust down the bank, gonna do my rain dance. Sitting down now and I'm waiting, waiting, always waiting. Dusty, dirty, reading. Said I'm gonna do my rain dance, gonna wash it dust down the bank, gonna do my It does down the bank on do my children's book that I wrote and it was illustrated by my good friend Marcella Avalar who's here as well but before we invite her and Holly Bass to the stage I'd like to read you the story so if you have a second I'll read it for you now as you can see the illustrations are very vibrant I don't know where she got that idea from. <laughs> so, the story is called Somebody to Love, the story of Valerie Jen's sweet little baby banjo Ailey. And the baby banjo Ailey couldn't make it tonight. Do you believe me? Why don't you believe me? <laughs> Probably because she's a star of the show and in the center of the stage right here. Can you see her back there? Okay, I'll hold it up. Right here. So that's the baby, my one and only little one. So here we go. There are hundreds of instruments in the world, but there is no other instrument like the sweet and tiny birthday present that was given to a little girl named Valerie June. Holding it close, she plucked a string. It made a very bright sound like ting, ting, ting. Oh, how that toy could ring, 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 which was perfect because Valerie June loved to sing, sing, sing. <laughs> she sang for Gran and Granddad. She sang with her friends on the playground. She sang for her mom and dad, but when she tried to strum along, the baby Benjalele could not make it through a whole song. There was a sign at school that read, Instruments in the Park. 
Thinking a band might help her to learn new things about her tiny gift, Valerie convinced her mom to take her and the banjolele to play with the other instruments. But when Valerie opened her instrument case, you should have seen the look on everyone's face. The look that said, what's a toy like that doing in this place? Oh my. Nervously, she tried to join the band, but just as before, the baby banjolele could not perform to the end. Embarrassed and confused by the banjolele's sudden stop in the middle of the song, Valerie and her mom packed up and went home. She took the round-faced four-string gift home and put it in the corner. For Valerie, the days went by and the weeks did fly and the years were filled with many adventures. But the little toy sat still and lonely in the corner and was covered with a layer of dust as thick as a cloud. No one could even see it anymore. Can you see it yeah. on the photo up there? I don't know. It looks like there's some red cowboy boots and some roller skates. I don't really see it. It's back there underneath all the stuff. Well, one day, when Valerie returned home from the park, she heard a soft whimpering sound. <laughs> Whatever could that ting, ting, ting sound be, she thought. Valerie was so tired from traveling and playing that she fell asleep and she did not look around to see where the ring, ring, ring was coming from. In the middle of the night, Valerie was awakened by an even louder sound. Zing, ting, ring, zing. Uh. She could tell that the sound came from the corner and with the whoosh, she blew, and a cloud of dust started to swirl all around the room. The little sweet and tiny toy was now loud as a fire truck zooming down the street. I have a dream, and I want to sing, said the toy. The days went by, and the weeks did fly, and the years were filled with many adventures. I have a voice and I have a song. I can zing, I can ring, I can ting, and I know I can sing. Will you please try again and take me with you to, the play, to play with the band in the park? Okay, little toy, Valerie said. If you really can sing, then let me hear your song. And because the toy had been alone for so long, this time when it started to sing, its voice became full of dust. <laughs> it, it was so hoarse <laughs> and broken that the sound could barely come out at all. By then, everyone in the house was awake and very upset by this loud and broken sound, <laughs> said Papa with a bitter tone. If that's all you can do, then you shouldn't have interrupted my sweet dreams with your whining. I agree, said Mama, all huffing, puffing, the singing is rough. They all began to laugh amongst themselves and whisper that the little toy should be thrown into the garbage bin for waking everyone up in the middle of the night. What do you think? Should she throw it away? I don't know. Let's see. Even the neighbors have been awakened, and they too thought Valerie should throw the toy away. I don't know. Then the banjolele heard Valerie gently and softly whisper one word. You know what that word was? Believe. She said, believe. And growing afraid of being tossed out, but also growing even bigger and braver, because Valerie loved her, the toy finally <coughs> coughed up the last bit of dust and belted out a gorgeous song called Somebody to Love. Well, amazing, Valerie said to the toy. I will take you with me everywhere because your voice is so beautiful and everyone should hear your song. You're such a sweet and tiny little instrument and I'm gonna call you 
the baby. All of the neighbors, mama, papa, and everyone in the house was moved to tears by the performance. And from that day forward, they loved to hear the baby sing because her voice reminded them to never give up and to follow their dreams. And so it was that the baby became the star of Valerie's show. You can see right there, Valerie's at uh, my green room, my dressing room where I get dressed, and there the baby has its own dressing room. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the story of the baby Banjalele. I want to say for a second, what is a baby Banjalele? Because a lot of people don't know. You can either call it a banjo uke, or you can call it a Banjalele, or a ukulele banjo. And over here to my left, I have an actual five string banjo, which I call the mama, because clearly the baby's got to have a mama. And then I have a, a little tiny ukulele to show you how they both come together to make the baby banjulele. And all of that was a dream. It was someone's dream. And so at the very back of the book, if you get yourself a copy of it, you'll see all of these dreamers, people from Albert Einstein to Oprah and Martin Luther King, Thomas Edison, Frida Kahlo. And everyone has a dream. And as you go on through the, to the very end of the book, you'll be able to read these inspiring proverbs from many different cultures, Tibetan proverbs, um, Nigerian proverbs, and just American proverbs from all over the world. And they are to keep you inspired when you have a dream and you have obstacles that you face, like baby faced all these obstacles. So thank you for listening to me read it, and I'd love to invite Holly Bass and Marcella Avalar out so we can talk about the book. Thank you so much, Valerie. I'm delighted to be here with Valerie June and with Marcella Avalar, the writer and illustrator of this wonderful children's book. My name is Holly Bass. I'm the National Director of Turnaround Arts, which is a wonderful education program based here at the Kennedy Center. What Turnaround Arts does is we work with public schools around the country, and particularly those schools that have um, limited arts access, teachers, and resources. So, for instance, many of our schools have never had a school musical before joining the Turnaround Arts Network. And so those are the things that we're doing as part of the Kennedy Center's mission as the nation's performing arts center is to bring the arts to more children everywhere. And Valerie June is actually one of our Turnaround Arts Ambassadors, which is how I came to meet her. And so, Valerie, I'd love to just start. And by the way, um, we have a microphone here in the front of the stage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat with Marcella and, and Valerie for a few minutes. And then we'll invite you all to ask your questions. And then Valerie's going to close us out with a few more songs. Does that sound good to everybody? All right, fantastic. So, Valerie, if you could just start by telling us, you know, how did you know you had this children's book inside of you? And sort of what inspired you to actually um, write it down, put the pen to paper. So much of the story of Somebody to Love is true. The baby Banjalele was given to me for my birthday, which is January 10th, coming up soon. <laughs> and it was given by my best friend, and when she gave it to me, I was thinking that it was a toy. I was like, this isn't a real instrument. It's like the Velveteen Rabbit. And so it took a life that was very childlike from the beginning. And then when I started to um, perform around the world and I'd written the song Somebody to Love, I started to tell the story about how it was really just a toy to me in the beginning and how it came to life for me through that song. And I've started to perform it for students through the Turnaround Arts program all over the nation. Y'all have invited us to come. 
and um, artists into schools. And as I was performing it, Kathy Fletcher, who was then the um, one who was running it, she said, you should turn it into a children's story. And I said, I want to so bad. <laughs> so finally I did. I had the right encouragement and motivation to do it, finally. Absolutely. And so how did you, Marcella, how did you get to know Valerie and begin the friendship and ultimately the collaboration? So we started as friends, and we were friends for a long time. I think we've been friends for maybe 10 years or more. <laughs> so we were friends for a long time, and I think one day she saw my art, and she just came to me and she said, will you be interested in doing the, a kid's book? I'm like, tell me more about it. <laughs> so she told me this story, and I definitely connected from, day, like, from the moment she, she told me. It, I connected from spirit, I connected deeply with, with her little uh, Val and from to the banjo lele too. Uh, because for me it's the same way, like the way I do art, how inspiration wakes you up in the middle of the night, but at the same time how you struggle with dreams and believe in yourself. And the struggle of like, I think the hardest thing of this book for us is being to, to keep up to even with, when it gets hard to keep up in, until you have it. <laughs> so, you know, I think a lot of times when we see uh, incredible artists like Marcella and Valerie June and then you see a beautiful book, you think, oh, you know, it's so easy for them. You know, they, they made this project and of course everyone was excited about it and like immediately, you know, you were able to find a publisher, but the real truth is a lot more complicated than that. How long did it take you to actually get the book published? And it took about three years to get the book published. We had the book finished and the illustrations and everything, and it was beautiful. And our agent shopped it to many different publishers, and we got a lot of rejection for three years. It was no, 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 no. We and then you also over. had to. <laughs> we cried. Yes, we did. You got cry. some very good advice, but that meant you had to go back to the drawing board literally yes. and redraw a lot of the illustrations. Can you tell us about that, Marcella? Yeah, it was a learning experience. Like you would think, like by the second, third letter, you get used to rejection. You don't. <laughs> Every letter hurt, <laughs> and it was just like we thought we had something good here. We just want to share it. We don't even care. Like we just want it out in the world. Why people don't like it? So we like secretly, each of us were like always very excited with each other. But later in, in we shared it with each other. We both cry over the, the letters. <laughs> like it just hurt a lot. But we did get a very good advice because we were so eager to have this in the world that at one point we decided to finish it all and we were going to self-published and we were going to do it just because we really wanted it. So we went on and did it. And then they, we did the whole book as Valerie, as a grown-up. And they're like, huh, there's no kid's book with grown-ups. And we're like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so when we finally got a publisher, we definitely had to, go, I had to go back and yeah, draw her as a kid because that's normal. <laughs> and it's a simple thing that you don't realize when you're so close sometimes to a project because as Valerie was saying, we're so, we're like grownups that we're still like kids inside. We're playful and uh, so we didn't even think of it. Like for us that this Val, it's the same Val that it was little Val, but it's not. <laughs> Yeah. And then I understand, Marcella, that you put a, a special surprise in the book that even Valerie June didn't know until it was published. Can you tell us a little bit about that process, too? Yes. So I wanted to be as real as possible because, as, she's, as, as she said, it's a real story. It's the way that somebody to love came to her and the way that the baby came to life. And so I wanted the story to be really, really close to her to her and to, as real as it was to me, to everybody. So one day I asked her and just asked like casually, we were not even uh, working uh, like on a deadline or anything and just like, oh, will you send me some photos of your family? And she's like, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> so I did get inspiration of the characters in her real family. So grand and granddad and mom and dad are the real family of Val, 
And I think in, in, one day I just like send, like, I have a surprise for you. And I just send her a few images. And I'm so happy they're there. And when I saw the illustrations she created that are, they look exactly like my mother and father. It looks exactly like grand and granddad. And I was blown away. And my grandmother passed this year in the summer. She was 96 years old, and she was ready. And so before she passed, though, her wits, everything, it's all, it was there to the very last breath. And she said, 96 years is a long time. I'm ready to go. And I was like, well, okay, Graham, well, I'm going to talk to God about it. She was in pain, but she hit it well. And I said, well, Gran, I've been working on something with a dear friend of mine, and I want to show you before you leave Earth this children's book that I'm working on. And I showed her the picture, and she was blown away, y'all, to see herself in a book. <laughs> So that was a very special moment, and it was also special when I got the first copy from Third Man Books in Nashville. I was at home in Tennessee, and I drove to Humboldt, which is where we are, and I showed my mom the book, and I didn't tell her she was really in there, and she opened it, and she was like, ah, it's really me. So the artwork, the way you did it, and honor my family, I really love it, and thank you for that surprise for all of us. I love that story. That's so great. We have a few minutes for questions. The questions can come from children or adults, but we'd love if you come walk down to the microphone and um, so we can answer your question. If you have questions about how they put the book together, um, the writing, the illustration, or what it's like to be an artist, does anyone in the audience have any questions for us? How's the weather? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Um, you, can, you can come up with your person too. You don't have to come by yourself. So we'd love to get a few um, audience questions. And so I'll give you all a couple minutes to just line up by this microphone right here. And so I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, the choices you made in terms of colors that are in the book. Yeah, so obviously I was inspired by her unique color palette. <laughs> and that was very easy. But the first color that, uh, that was in, in me was the, the pink, the bright pink, because for me, pink is love. And I wanted the pink to travel through the world and be in all, all the houses in in United States first and maybe around the world. <laughs> Excellent. And then how did you expand from the pink to other colors? Well, then, uh, yeah, I like the turquoise. It's very prominent through the book. As you see, she wears a lot of those colors in her jewelry and herself. And the indigo, uh, for me, it's also you, very you. And it's like this like brightness, as, as the same as the yellow. Like, you sh if you look at her Instagram, have you seen her shows? Yeah, you know I, it was very easy to play with color. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's take our first question now. Hello, thank you. I'm so curious, so you, you said a lot in the story is real, and I'm wondering about when you did pick up the banjo lily again, what that was like as adult Valerie. Um. <laughs> so I received it when I was in my early 20s, and it, like many people, you might have an instrument at home and it's getting dusty, it's collecting dust, and you're saying, one day I'm gonna learn how to play it. Well, it wasn't until I was in my late 20s that the song just started calling me, and the instrument was calling me. And as soon as I picked it up, that song came to me. It just came out. And these days, this is very good for a lot of the younger people who want to learn, or any age who wants to learn how to play an instrument. I'll say that. You can learn anything you want from going online and watching videos on YouTube and getting the chords. And so I did that and I taught myself just the basic chords and started to expand. So as the years go by, because now I'm 40, I'll be 41 soon. So, so um, early 20s till the end is the journey of this banjo ukulele. And on the back of it, it was made in Memphis by a luthier named Tommy George and Christian Stanfield. 
And inside the back, I just noticed this, because you're going through life and you don't think about it, but the birth certificate's in there, and it says when it was born in, um, I think it was 2012, maybe? I don't know. I'll take a look and see. Thank you. Yeah. Let's have our next question. And feel free to adjust that mic stand. It's okay. No? Well, you don't have to say it in the mic. Say it to your dad. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to? You want to say, say it to your, your person? Are you able to? Okay. Well, All the right. Bay Thank and Jolie was born in 2010. Just so you know, it was 20, 2010. <laughs> okay. Fun Our fact: next In the book, in the passport, it's my birthday. <laughs> What's your favorite instrument to play? Wow, that's a very good question. And if I choose one exact instrument, then the rest of them will get jealous, so I can't say anything. <laughs> but if I meet you, maybe when they're not around, I'll tell you. No, I'm joking, it's always a different one. I love them all. <laughs> that's a good question. Don't you just love the height of that mic? Yes. Um, my question is, with your experience with your book and how it was being rejected multiple times, would you still want to be interested in doing a second one again? <laughs> well, yes, because that's life. <laughs> um, this is not the first thing that we get rejected. We did learn a lot, and I think that also will help us if we do another one or another different project, too. Like, I would not go and do another book entirely. I would do three pages this time. <laughs> and, and, and I will do things differently because we learn. But yes, of course. <laughs> did the banjo really talk or didn't? Well, the way that the banjo talks is in music notes. So when I heard the, heard the music notes, I don't know how to describe it, but I'll start to play the instrument, and as I'm playing it, I'll hear a voice that sings. So I was playing it, and the voice started singing, I'll be somebody, I'll be somebody. And I just kept playing that again and again for months, days and days and weeks and weeks. And then the rest of the song started to come, but it just takes time, and when the instrument talks, it talks in notes. But when I hear the songs, it's kind of like when you turn on the radio and you hear a song. Well, I hear them in my head like that. So that's where the talking part came from. <laughs> that's a good question. How does it feel like to be in a book? Wow, it's, it's like dancing on clouds with a couple of rainbows surrounding you and you're just doing all these dances. That's what it feels like. <laughs> Do you think you'll get really famous? Oh my goodness. Well, I don't know if I'll get really famous, but I think the baby is getting very famous. <laughs> How did you meet Hall? So we met at the Kennedy Center because I work here at the Kennedy Center. I'm very blessed to have a, a job where I meet amazing artists all the time. I just met Marcella tonight, but I actually met Valerie June about four years ago. She was one of the first people I met when I started my job. So of course I was like, this is the best job ever. In my first month, I met Valerie June and Esperanza Spaulding, if you can imagine. And we had breakfast together, and I was like, oh, I'm getting paid for this? <laughs> Amazing. But that's how we met, through being artists and through um, our love of education and children. Valerie, what grade did you meet your friends? 
What grade? Well, we were adults when we first met, and so we were out of school. She had gone to college and moved from Mexico to the United States to live in New York. And Holly, you have had so many, I mean, so many different, she's an artist as well. She writes, she does dancing, and she does paintings, and all kinds of installations. So through art is how I met Holly. Yeah. Grade 23. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think that you would be a singer? When I was a little girl, when people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always know that I wanted to be a singer, but I would never tell him because I knew that I had a very strange voice and I knew that they would say, well, okay, why don't you sing something for me? And I didn't want them to discourage me. But I also just didn't really believe that it could happen to a person like me, just the little old ordinary girl from a small town in the middle of America. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if that dream can come true for me. And so I had to believe in order to make it happen. What's your favorite song to play? Ooh, that's a very good question. I will say that I really love playing Somebody to Love. <laughs> I love it. And you'll be able to hear it um, tonight. So she's going to play that favorite song in, a, in just a few minutes. Um, are the banjo lele chords the same chords as the ukulele? They are the same, and it is tuned the same as well. That's a very good question. And in the book, it talks about how the banjo lele is tuned in the very back. And um, for those who read music, I don't read music. I just hear it in my head, like when I was telling one of the ladies, who, the ones who was before you. Um, I, and, but if you read music, then you can read the, the notes because our friend Dave Sherman, he transcribed the song. And so the sheet music is in the book. Hi, uh, so what's your favorite part of like your book? Also, I really love your outfits. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part is that I get to work with one of my best friends. And, and we play dress up. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do it. We play dress we up even on normal days. That's the fun part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your favorite instrument? Wow. You know, I love so many instruments, but I'm going to tell you. Today, I was out and I went to a store. And a lady there was saying to me, where, where are you going tonight? And I said, well, I'm going to go to the Kennedy Center and I'm going to sing some songs for children. And she said, what instruments do you play? And I told her, baby banjo, Laylee, mama banjo, and a guitar. And she said, I play the harp. And I was like, harp is one of my favorite instruments. I don't know how to play it, but I love harp. Don't get jealous, guys. Don't get jealous. <laughs> Do you know what the harp is and how beautiful it is? And it's such a very large instrument. And so she plays that, and that's one of my favorite ones. What about you? What's one of your favorite instruments? Well, of course, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love the baby. And what about you? One of my favorite instruments, actually, is the cello. I've always loved the cello, and we're also fortunate that one of our turnaround artists is Yo-Yo Ma, and so I've gotten to hear him play cello, which is really great. Oh, I think we have our last audience question. Uh, what was your favorite instrument? <laughs> ah, well, my next favorite instrument that I don't play is the cello, <laughs> so I'm with Holly, we're together. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you for those wonderful questions. And um, Valerie, this is your first children's book, but it's actually your second book because you have a book of poems. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about your book of poems and maybe share a poem? Well, the poetry book is a book that I wrote before, well, the timing just kind of mixes, honestly. Because the poems came over time and so I'd have the children's book, but I also had a poem would come while I'm washing dishes or while I'm walking down the street. And so I started to write it, but I didn't know I was writing a children's, I mean, a, a poetry book. And then 
uh, another turnaround artist, Amanda Lucidon, said, what have you been doing with your music? I said, well, you know, I haven't been doing a lot with my music besides touring and shows, because I'm between records, but I've been writing a lot of poems. And she said, give them to me. I'm going to turn you into, uh, on to my agent. And she did, and that's how I got a book deal. And these, all the 200 poems that I had, the agent loved them, and she connected me with the publisher. And so I wrote this book first, Maps for the Modern World. And I was inspired by Shel Silverstein and Rupi Kaur, I think that's how you say her last name. And they do drawings in their poetry books, so I did all these illustrations in there because I wanted to be like them. <laughs> I'll read you a poem. Yes, I'd love that. Okay. This one is called Quilt of Life. Imagine if we're all doing so great and, and just caring for ourselves in a beautiful way. They're all so beautiful. I'm so happy we found each other. We are all rich in self. We found ourselves in the world that is and we stopped asking the world to be what it is not and started to appreciate what it has always been. It cradled us, it sheltered us, it ever so generously gave and gave quantum leap, quantum leap to unfold for all who seek. Woven, winding, intertwined, twisted, tossed, yours is mine. Look inside, gold to find, check again, dust of time. Echoes span in air to sing, buzz of bees hums all things. Om and om and ah ya, ah. oh ee oh, and all things glow. Om and om and all and all. Speckled, speckled quilt to sew. Do you have another to share with us? Sure. One more, which might be easier to read from here. It's a very short one. There is a light around every shadow. Train your eyes to see them both. That's wonderful. And Marcella, I just want to ask you one more question before we sort of transition. And um, just thinking about this poem here about light and shadow and how you train your eyes to see. How do you, as a visual artist, continue to find inspiration and train yourself to, to see um, new, I don't know, imaginations or inspirations for your work? Well, that's, I, I don't think, uh... I think the best training is to let yourself open up. Um, I think I find myself, the more I try, the, the more I get close. So I think I, it's a little balance between hard work, but rest and do the things you love. Because if you try too hard and only work, things don't come to you. So I do think um, ins inspiration is this tricky thing that is so magical but you have to, to let the, your heart open, your mind open, to wonder yourself, to be playful, so inspiration finds you. That's such a great message. We were talking backstage about this idea um, that oftentimes, as adults, we don't let ourselves play, we forget how to play, and it's very important to uh, keep that in mind and, and keep inspiring. Um, I know that you're gonna be signing some of the poetry books in the back after the performance. And I, unfortunately, the children's books did not arrive, but I think there may be a way to pre-order them for those of you who are interested. And I'd just like to say that I still read children's books, even though I'm an adult, because I think it is important for us to keep that magic and um, keep that childhood joy alive. And with that, I want to thank Marcella for coming on stage and sharing the process, and Valerie for sharing this beautiful book you all created together. And we'd love, Valerie, for you to take us out with a few more songs. Sounds great. I'll play a few more. Thank you, Holly. Thank, thank you, Marcella. You. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I will play a song about a bee. Now this is not a bumblebee, but it kind of could be a bumblebee. I like to call it my honeybee. A very 
magical honeybee. Who loves sunshine? Sunshine coming in my door. Sunshine coming in my door. Tell my worries that they got to go. Tell my worries that they got to go. Well, eagle bird, eagle bird, take my eagle bird, take my honeybee, take my take my worries from me. Calling love, want to step to me. Calling love, want to step to me. Throw me down, tell me how it's gonna be. Shake me up, tell me how it's gonna be. A snow white dove. Take my worries, honey bee. Take my, take my worries from me. Take my worries. Mm -hmm. Take my worries from me. Stardust shining on my face Feathers flying all over this place Settle down, fell into your own Eagle bird got them black snake charms Honey bee, honey bee, take my Honey bee, take my Honey bee, take my Take my worries from bee Take my worries Take my worries from me Thank you So growing up My mother would sing a song around the house And when she sang this song it was a very old song, and she said that she sang it in school, and that the kids at school would bring their ukuleles to school, and they would all sing this song. She didn't know how to play ukulele, but she could sing. It goes like this. Well, you get a line and I'll get a pole, honey. You get a line and I'll get a pole, baby. You get in line and I'll get a pole We'll go down to the crowded hole Now, honey, baby mine Well, you see them crawdads strutting round, honey See them crawdads strutting round, baby See them crawdads strutting round You think they're the mayor of the crowded town I say, honey Baby mine Well tell me what you gonna do When the whale runs dry, honey What you gonna do When the whale runs dry, baby What you gonna do When the whale runs dry Sit on the bank and watch the crawdads cry Now, honey Baby So you get a line and I'll get a pole, honey. Can you say, honey? You get a line and I'll get a pole, babe. What about babe? You get a line and I'll get a pole. We'll go down to the crowded hole now, honey. Baby mine. Let's try it. Oh, you get a line and I'll get a pole, honey. You get a line and I'll get a pole, babe. Say that. You get a line and I'll get a pole. We'll go down to the crawdad hole now, honey. Baby, my, mm, my, 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 honey. Baby, my, mm, and I'm singing now, honey. Baby.
Good job singing. Patient baby banjo lady. So here we go. Are you ready to wake up from your nap, baby? <laughs> Let's see. up at night thinking that only if you had somebody but I'll be somebody you're somebody to love where did they tell you there were plenty of fish in the sea but you're out in the cold and you're feeling empty Oh, you're looking for somebody Well, I'll be somebody Somebody to love Well, I'll be somebody I'll be somebody I'll be somebody darkness of night and battered and broken cause you know it ain't right cause you ain't got nobody well I'll be somebody you're somebody to love say when you're lonely well I'll be somebody Notice in the book, the baby banjo Lely, Marcella did a great job because it's identical. At the very top, it has my name, Val, at the very top of my banjo Lely. So it's the same in the book, and that's a very special thing to me. I don't know if you can see it, but that's there. And then on the back, it says 110, which is my birthday, and 2010 inside and the label inside. So all of these are special marks of my little baby banjo Lely. I'm going to ask this, the kids one more time. What is this first instrument that's very close to me? Do you know the name of it? Right, it's a ukulele. And I see you have one, so we're going to have to play some songs. It's on. And the one on the very end is called a... It's a banjo, a five-string banjo. And the two together create what? Right, Banjulele. So that's how the Banjulele is made. Thank you so much for inviting us here. We've had a wonderful time. My baby and I love you. Thank you. Hey, have a great night. <laughs>